When petroleum giant BP spilled millions of litres of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico three years ago, it was the worst ever offshore oil disaster. To try and break up that massive slick, vast quantities of chemical dispersant was sprayed on the spill. It seemed to work. The oil disappeared. But people started getting sick and then people started dying. Now this environmental disaster has become a health catastrophe. And as you'll see in this special investigation, it could happen so easily right here in Australia. This vast delta is where the Mississippi meets the Gulf of Mexico. Three years ago, it was soaked in 700 million litres of crude oil. When BP's Deepwater Horizon offshore oil rig exploded. And 4 million litres of chemical dispersant was used to make the spill go away. Oil and dispersant poisoned this entire area today. It's officially cleaned up. But there is something in this marshland, something in the water, something in the air, that's making people and marine life very sick. We're being basically killed from the inside out. Tonight, how the cure became the disease. I mean, every time I turn around, it's somebody, and it's like, I'm watching it happen all around me, and I'm watching these kids get sick, and I'm like, is it coming? And how these deadly chemicals are being used in Australia, including on our own Great Barrier Reef. They're very commonly used and approved for use in Australia. Are you aware that those two dispersants are banned in 18 countries? Um, Venice, Louisiana was a quiet fishing town until it became ground zero of the BP oil disaster. That has nothing to do with the federal government. And it turned Kendra Arneson into the Erin Brockovich of Louisiana. We have paperwork and back taxes. As she took BP to task. So that's our position. And now their, their stocks are plummeting? Aw, uh, you want a towel to cry on? Maybe you should use the one that's soaked with my tears. I first met her three years ago, when oil was still gushing out of the Deepwater Horizon well, 200 kilometres offshore. It's incredible to be at this place right now. This is the actual source of the oil spill, the beginning of the catastrophe. The biggest oil clean-up effort in history relied heavily on two chemical dispersants. Coregxit 9500 and Coregxit 9527. Kindra would learn a lot more about them as she rallied a community besieged by oil sickness. What you see sitting here and all around us, we're the trade-off. That's what, that's what unites us. Their symptoms vary, but their stories don't. What's the bruising? These lives were permanently changed by the BP spill and the clean-up attempt that followed. <laughs> BP ate my brain. It's something I will never get back. Forever, I will have a hole in my brain. Jamie Griffin was a chef serving meals to oil spill workers and would often mop up after them. It's a whole body muscle spasm. She says she questioned a BP representative about the sticky chemical substance being tracked in on the workers' boots, but was told it was as safe as dishwashing liquid. The chemicals have given me a neurological disorder called toxic encephalopathy. I have a lesion on my brain, which causes a seizure disorder and other neurological problems. It's kind of like a, a chemical-induced form of MS. Even if every toxin in my body goes away, the damage that it did to my body while they were in there, I have to live with for the rest of my life. They said it was cancer. Kenny Nelson is talking about his sister Lisa's diagnosis. It's about three times its size. This is her in her dying days. What's the bruising on your chest? I don't know. It, it just appeared. She was a fit and healthy massage therapist. 
She went for a swim 400 kilometres from the spill, four months later, when authorities said it was safe, and fell ill the next day. It was cancer. She had a, a, a tumour that was pushing on her vena cava and that was cutting off her circulation, and that's where the swelling was from. And is it only up high? Is it elsewhere? No, it's down here too. I was all around my diaphragm. How long was it before she passed? Five months. We have a claims process. It can be accessed three ways through a 1-800 number. Excuse me. Accessed... Stop. Stop. You're wasting my time. Uh, U.S. Congressman Jerry Nadler is angry. For three years, he's fought BP, as BP fought to block and deny health compensation claims. Could result in thousands and thousands of people getting sick or dying as a result of the cleanup, not of the original disaster. Do you believe what has happened in the Gulf is a health catastrophe? Yes, absolutely. To this day, have you been given any clear answers by BP? No, we have not. How do you describe that? Is that just contempt, do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. It's contempt. They, they, they do what they can get away with. In Tylertown, Mississippi, hey, buddy. Steve and Stephanie Aguinaga are 200 kilometres from the oil spill site. But they couldn't be closer to the reality of this catastrophe. The last thing a person would ever think on their mind is if you go to the beach, you're going to die. When Steve went for a beach holiday, three months after the spill, and more than a thousand kilometres from the deep water rig, he thought it was safe to swim. Until he and his best mate, Merrick the Lane, emerged from the water covered in a sticky mixture of oil and dispersant. It looked like burnt orange suntan beads and because he had a little bit of a beard growing mm -hmm. and I'm like what is that and so I would you know I'd grab it and I'd try to pull it but it would just smear into his face within days Steve was gravely ill I was vomiting blood urinating blood um, passing blood in my stool I was hallucinating but Steve was the lucky one his mate Merrick was dead within weeks. And I was sitting on the front row, deathly sick, and I'm just looking at his casket. And my heart was just broke. And I wish I could have just crawled in there and, you know, passed away with him, you know. You know that. You're just poison. There's nothing you can do. It's not just people who are suffering. For three years, residents have been documenting the steady stream of dying wildlife, including dolphins. Left to right. Day three on the beach. And turtles. Dead sea turtle. It's just heartbreaking. And every day, these toxic tar balls still wash ashore. This is tar balls that we found yesterday in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Fresh. So these are fresh tar These tar are balls. fresh. These are yesterday. Right. Yes. I wouldn't smell that. This is three years later. This is yes. still common. Yes. Both of those. And that's an effect of the dispersant. We took the tar balls to Rip Kirby at the University of Southern Florida for analysis. He's a coastal geologist by trade and an activist by nature. This is actually what was used yes. in the Gulf, these two products here. Yes. He's proving just how long Corexit dispersants stay in the environment. More dispersant left. And a simple UV light like test reveals how much seen. dispersant is still in these tar balls by glowing yellow. I'd be looking for tar balls that would have this kind of a yellow gold green signature. Rip's discovery means that these tiny balls are highly toxic because of what happens when you mix oil and Corexit. Given the color that it's fluorescing, this matches up 
quite uh, succinctly with the 9527 and the 9500 samples. And it gets worse. The respected Journal of Environmental Pollution has published a study into the biological effects of the Deepwater disaster. It found when Coregxit 9500 and oil are mixed, toxicity increases up to 52-fold. In other words, it's not just oil and water that don't mix. Oil and Coregxit 9500 combined multiplies the toxic impact an astonishing 52 times. And are those chemicals carcinogenic? Yes, all of the compounds that are found in tar balls are carcinogenic. Now you can see the sand looks pretty clean to the naked eye. Yeah. But Rip's UV light experiment also led him to alarming accidental discoveries. It's still present on the beaches and Coregs it also absorbs into skin. One of our young researchers was on his knees in the water doing the sampling and I shined the ultraviolet light on his legs inadvertently. And all of a sudden I saw that his legs had orange spots all up and down his legs. And I said, look, see, you got tar on your knee. And I went like that and I looked at my finger and there was nothing on my finger. Well, that meant that it wasn't on his skin, it was in his skin. It had absorbed into his skin to such a saturation level that I could actually make it fluoresce back through his skin with the ultraviolet light. The problem is you can't see it during normal light. So how many people have had this happen to them? I mean, no one can see it. It seems to be an invisible toxic threat. And no one can see it, and everyone is saying it's safe to be on the beach. Coming up. The go! BP's Big Spin. This Louisiana seafood is delicious. And how those toxic chemicals have been used in Australia, including on our Great Barrier Reef. Do you know how safe or how toxic Coregs at 9527 and Coregs at 9500 are? That's next on 60 Minutes.